At Columbia University, a team of scientists helps us see the brain of Oliver Sacks on music. Dr. Sachs, welcome to the lab. Okay, thank you. Nice to be here. I don't think I have any of these things. Aneurysm, cardiac pacemaker... Hal Hinkle, a PhD candidate in neuroscience, is going to lead Sachs through the experiment. And I guess I weigh 190 today. Wonderful. I'd better put pounds in case they think it's kilos. Thank you. Okay. Good. Right. For the test, he'll first be asked to listen to a piece of music. It's one he's familiar with, Diversions by Joseph Horowitz. He even has it on his iPod. Then he'll be told to imagine the same piece playing in his head. If you'll just take a seat for a moment. We're going to peer inside his brain using functional magnetic resonance imaging, or fMRI. An fMRI scan shows changes in blood flow in the brain, so we can see which regions are active. We're going to do two sets of scans. The first set of scans, we're going to be asking you to listen to music, and then we're going to ask you to imagine that music. I look forward to it. I bet you do. First, Sax listens to the music. Then, Hal asks him to recreate the melody in his head. So, the question is, did his brain perform in the same way when he listened and when he imagined? And it got to, I think, right here. Hal, along with neuroscientist Joy Hirsch, reviews the results with Dr. Sachs. I want you to see how much of this activity is in common. Remember I pointed out these frontal lobe areas, mm -hmm. the middle frontal gyrus, Executive see one, yeah. exactly the same place uh -huh. in both sets. So in imagining the music, you're engaging exactly those same mm -hmm. areas. Many brain regions were active in both cases. But when Sachs imagined music, there was one curious difference. Notice this additional activity in the frontal lobe. That means the front part of your brain is very engaged in creating the music. The music isn't coming from the auditory cortex. One might imagine that it's coming from your frontal lobe. Mm -hmm. Look at this. Isn't that gorgeous? It seems that in the brain of Dr. Sachs, his internal iPod is orchestrated by his frontal lobe, the part of the brain that coordinates higher mental functions and working memory. But could the scan of his brain tell us what song he was imagining? It tells us that you're listening to music, perhaps that you're imagining music, but it doesn't tell us anything about the specific music, at least at this point. I can't read my thoughts. I can't read your thoughts, but we're trying, Oliver. Yeah, we're trying. For musicians, imagining music can also activate motor regions of the brain. But what about non-musicians? So, Oliver, there's this broad question of, are all brains musical? Well, I've certainly spoken to a lot of people and corresponded to a lot of people. Um, there are those who say that they couldn't bear a day without music. And even if they don't hear it on the radio, they will hear it in their minds. There are others who say music doesn't mean much to them, and, uh, and if it disappeared tomorrow, uh, that would be okay with them. 